This is a Seebeckstein grand piano, but it's not just any Seebeckstein piano. It's the Seebeckstein piano that lived in Trident Studios from 1968 until some point in the mid-1980s, and during this relatively short residency became potentially one of the most noteworthy single instruments of the 20th century. Over the short period that this piano lived at Trident Studios in London, it was used on some of the most iconic recordings of the era. For example, in 1968, the Beatles were one of the first artists to record with it, using it on Hey Jude, Honey Pie, and Martha My Dear. To make it better. But the Beatles were far from the only legendary artist to use the Trident piano. For example, in 1970, Elton John used it to record his self-titled album, which included his UK debut single, Your Song. Elton returned to the Trident piano again in 1972 to record his album Madman Across the Water, which featured the track Tiny Dancer. David Bowie recorded three of his most iconic albums at Trident Studios, Hunky Dory, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, and Aladdin Sane. And the Trident piano featured throughout all of these albums, appearing on some of Bowie's most legendary songs. When you hear some of these tracks back to back, you can start to recognise that bright, crisp tone that this piano produced. But her mummy is yelling no. But a friend is By some reports, session keyboard player Rick Wakeman was actually the de facto session piano player at Trident Studios. He played the Trident piano on Bowie's aforementioned Hunky Dory album, and the same year also played the Trident piano on Get It On by T-Rex. If the Beatles, Elton John and David Bowie weren't enough to already give this piano legendary status, the next band certainly will. Queen recorded their first two albums and part of their third album at Trident Studios, meaning you can hear the Trident piano on many of their early songs, most notably on Seven Seas of Rye. It's often claimed that Bohemian Rhapsody was also recorded on this piano, for example in this article from the NME. As amazing as this would be, it doesn't actually appear to be true, as by 1975, when Queen recorded Bohemian Rhapsody, they had stopped recording at Trident Studios. So, so far we have the Beatles, Elton John, Queen, David Bowie and T-Rex, but who else can we add to this list of legends? Well, to name a few more, in 1971, Harry Nilsson used the Trident piano on his classic Without You. In 1972, Lou Reed recorded his legendary Transformer album at Trident, using the Trident piano on classic tracks such as Perfect Day. And that same year, the Trident piano featured on Carly Simon's You're So Vain. In 1979, Boomtown Rats used the Trident piano on their signature song, I Don't Like Mondays. The artists we've looked at so far are only a sample of those who used the Beckstein during its time at Trident. I could also mention Manfred Mann, Genesis, Supertramp, Yes, Nick Cave and the Bad Seed, the Bee Gees, the list goes on. As you may have gathered by now, the C. Beckstein piano at Trident Studios was highly sought after and was one of the unique selling points of the studio. 
In his 2013 autobiography, Norman Sheffield, who was the founder of Trident Studios, said, The piano in the studio was becoming an integral part of our success. It was a Bechstein, which I leased from a company called Jake Samuel Pianos. Everyone loved it, and it had begun to be featured on records from Elton, Carly Simon, Genesis, David Bowie, and Supertramp. The Trident piano was a handmade C. Bechstein grand piano, which was over a hundred years old at the time. And one of the things that made it so sought after was its distinctively bright tone. Allegedly, this particular C. Bechstein piano was fitted with slightly harder than usual hammers, so when they hit the strings it would result in a bright, crisp tone. Also, apparently, the action on the piano, so how hard you had to hit on the keys, was quite tough, so you had to hit quite hard to get a sound out of it, which would result in a louder tone. This bright present tone made it perfect for cutting through the thick mix of a rock song. To show you what I mean, let me play you Suffragette City by David Bowie. If I isolate the piano, you can hear its bright crisp tone. And now, even with the other instruments in, even though it's not at the front of the mix anymore, the piano is still cutting through quite clearly. You may be asking now, well, where is this legendary piano? Is it in a museum or a studio somewhere? Well, Trident Studios was sold in 1981, and what happened to the piano after that is fairly unclear. I did find a couple of accounts online from people who had claimed to have previously worked at Trident Studios, and they reported that when the piano was moved out of Trident, it was badly damaged. According to these slightly dubious online reports, apparently, when the piano was being hoisted out of the studio because the studio was closing down, the cradle which was holding the piano snapped and the piano smashed to the ground. Allegedly, it was then repaired and sold on, but how true this story is, I don't know. There were also reports that at some point before Trident Studio closed, the piano was restrung, and after that it never quite sounded the same. The piano's current location is unclear, although it does appear it was sold at auction in 2008 for £200,000. Something that I think is important to remember is that most of the instruments we use today are mass-produced. They are literally identical to one another. When I play my Nord Piano 3, for example, it produces the same tone and the same sound as any other Nord Piano 3. But an instrument like the Trident Piano, a century-old, handmade piano, was almost literally a one-of-a-kind instrument. The particular way that this piano had been manufactured and maintained gave it its own distinct character and tone, its own nuances, which made it distinct not only from other pianos, but from other C. Bechstein pianos. The sheer number of classic recordings that this piano was used on, coupled with the fact that it seemingly had some magic quality to it which made it extra desirable to rock musicians, has cast a myth around this piano, cast a legend of it, making it like a missing artefact of the golden age of rock and roll music. And although the Trident Piano's days as a recording instrument are far behind us now, I'm pretty confident that music lovers will go on listening to its back catalogue for centuries to come. Thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon for making these videos possible. And a special thank you goes to Adam Granger, Andre Sines Diaja, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Bruce Mount, Cameron Olivella, Chris Cabell, Kieran Bennon, Daniel Long, Darren Harvey, David Defunderfer, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, Eyes, FD Hodor, Golfhouse, Gilamo Latona, James Keo, J.A. Cockensparger, Joe Watson, Jonas Soderstrom. Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Meg Fellows, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Orlando Bernard, Pablo Ocampo, Paul Muller, Paul Pazel, Peter Dunphy, Roger Clay, Snitzelcraft, C. Jean Kang, Steve Daly, Thomas Armstrong, Tim Beaker, Timothy Payne, Toot, Bidad Flowers, and Vladimir Kodakov.